Marilyn Rowe, what an honor and a privilege. When I first became director of this company, um, let me rewind, when I first danced with this company, I kept hearing Marilyn Rowe, Marilyn Rowe. And my first question to you is, what is it like being a legend? David, I've never ever thought of myself as a legend. I decided to throw you a little curveball oh, in yes, the first thank question. You. <laughs> but um, I, you don't have to answer that question. <laughs> thank you. Um, I will answer the question for you. Um, I, you know, there are ballerinas um, with every company around the world that leave such an undeniable mark on the fabric of a company, um, you know, whether that's Kolpakova at the Marinsky or um, Antoinette Sibley at the Royal Ballet, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. then there's Marilyn Rowe at the Australian Ballet. And it's such an honor for us to sit down and have a chat, but I know you're deep in a process right now. Yes. You're in the studio with um, the principal couples guiding them through Anne Williams' Swan Lake, which is a version that you know so intimately. What has your time been like coming back into the studio with dancers you may know well, <laughs> guiding <laughs> them through a version that you know very well? Yeah. No, it's been an absolute joy and a privilege, David. And um, I think it's because I know the dancers that I have been coaching so very well. Um, it's been a wonderful experience to be able to pass on the knowledge I have and also what I learnt from Anne, working with her, Anne Willems, as a, as a wonderful coach, one of the best coaches I've ever worked with. And I've worked with, with a lot, you know, you know, over my career. But uh, there was always something special about Anne in that she could delve into any character. and. Even if you're a walk-on person, she would go up to you and ask you, what are you trying to say? <laughs> what do you, what's your story? How confronting. It is. She <laughs> could be very confronting. <laughs> she could be very difficult, as a lot of those people are. Mm. But um, she cared so passionately about what she was doing mm. and you know, the knowledge that she was trying to impart to you and to make it believable. And I think that's what I've been trying to do with the with the beautiful dancers in the in and the other thing is not to impose myself on what I did but mm. to make sure that it's them yeah. it's their story yeah. within the framework of choreography yeah but and that's very much Anne too so I've been very conscious of um making them look the best they can look yeah and i'm all, all also like to have dialogue and talk about now do you feel comfortable about that or mm -hmm. uh, or we can do something else mm -hmm. so you know it's 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 a lovely journey and i've worked with some of them when we did merry widow the last time too oh yeah so um you know i, I love coaching and uh, it's been just a privilege yeah well it's a privilege to have you and i think that's the sign of a great coach in a way is you know instilling your experience and your knowledge but also looking at the artist in front of you absolutely because time marches on it does and interpretation develops of course. technique obviously develops yes, a lot and i think one person i'd like to sort of you know point out is amber scott she's dancing her final performance um 22 years with the australian ballet and you have a long history with amber i do and so tell us a little bit about your history with her, with this, you know, at, at, in her time, iconic Australian ballerina. Absolutely. Well, I've known her since she was 11, mm. uh, when she used to come into the Australian Ballet School um, on a Saturday, it started. <laughs> and then... <laughs> it always starts on a Saturday. It always starts on a Saturday. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was teaching her on a Saturday and then, um, you know, she joined the school full time and so, it was obvious that she was obvious that she was a very talented student, and uh, you know she worked so wonderfully well. But apart from that, she was—I could see in her that she was a lovely artist, mm. 
and a beautiful person. And that's what I love about her too. I think you can, it doesn't matter how great you are, I think if you can have some humility, mm. it sort of enriches you as an artist. It absolutely it, does. It I really couldn't does. agree with you more. Yeah, so that, that, I think that was the generosity of Amber, which I loved. And I, I was so privileged to have been part of her life's progress through the school mm -hmm. and then into the company. And um, I coached her a lot um, in the school when she went to, you know, I took her to um, Japan. She won a wonderful competition in Tokyo um, doing Aurora. And I still remember us together in the studio going through the, the details of mm. that. We, I think we both still talk about Oh, how that, beautiful. that lovely time that we spent together and now to come back when she's about to retire mm. is uh, you know the full circle is amazing absolutely yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. oh that's great yeah so Marilyn tell us about your partnership with Calvin Co I think you know we've seen this, the, the the videos but what was it what was it like um, working with someone you know you work so intimately with dancing creating roles expressing on stage um, well Peggy um, put us together basically she thought we complemented each other on a physicality but it, it started when we were both soloists really because mm. uh, Igor Mosev came out here and um, he came into the company and he watched the company and um, he said, oh, I, I'd like to do a work for the company and I want, I'd like to use Kelvin and Marilyn. So uh, we thought, well, this is amazing. <laughs> and uh, he created this work called The Last Vision. I don't know whether you've heard of it. Probably not. I think I have heard of it. I've just yes. never seen a video. No, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was about a soldier and who dies and his, his loved one and it was a very short little piece but um, it was quite dated mm. but that's where Kelvin and I sort of started to come together mm. and because we were sort of the young ones and Peggy was wanting to build Australian dancers mm -hmm. that was very much her thing and so she um, you know we did so many things together and we worked together with Peggy before we went to Moscow in 1973 because we were first of all invited by Moiseev to go in 1968, which was the very first international ballet competition in oh, Moscow. Okay. That, but Peggy said we weren't ready and we, we weren't. So four years later, we were again invited. So that, that so we worked, we used to work after hours with Peggy and, um, and we did uh, La Femme Garde. Uh, Nureyev's Romonda, which uh -huh. was quite a thing yes. because he was sort of, yes. you couldn't mention his name. In Russia, yeah. Yeah, and um, Gemini, we did, Glenn allowed us to, to sort of do part of Gemini and uh, Esmeralda, so uh, and that was quite something. So, you know, we, we had, we had a, such a, a journey together yeah. as young people growing up as a partnership. Yeah. Hmm. Was it, um, you know, was it amicable? Did you, did you, did you argue in the studio? Did no. you get along perfectly? Actually, we didn't. Uh, uh, Kelvin was a really calm person, yeah. which is probably, probably good. I'm a perfectionist and I get nervous and that sort of thing. I've gotten so. that impression. <laughs> Not the nerves, the perfectionist, yeah, so which is good. <laughs> so um, you know, Kel could always calm me down and um, so from, you know, so that, you balanced each other out. We, we did balance each other very, very well. Yes. So 1973, yes. you got on a plane yes. and you went to Moscow. Yes. Um, a very different time in the city, I think, during communism. It was very well, difficult. That was the time of that competition, 1973. Uh, we went back in 78, but um, I actually became quite ill because there was no food. Did you? Yeah, and um, the doctors gave me vitamin B injections or something. Mm -hmm. And Pe Dame Peggy's uh, interpreter, Olga, mm -hmm. she was just gorgeous. She used to go to the markets and try and find tomatoes and some green vegetables um, just to give us some food. Oh, and there, there was nothing. The best thing was the ice cream. 
<laughs> the ice cream is very good, actually. The ice cream is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they still have the ice cream that they made during the Soviet Union. Do they? Yes. Um, well, thank you, thank you, Olga, the translator, for trying to find you um, some yeah. nourishment. But you had quite a success in Moscow. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at that stage, you know, Australian dancers were really starting to make their mark around the world. So what was the energy like when you went to the competition? Well, interestingly enough, um, they thought we were from Austria. <laughs> they have to add an how, L and some yeah, other and letters. <laughs> how can Australia have two dancers when they have kangaroos copping down the street? That's what people thought. But... Um, it all came together because the first thing we did was La Fille Malgarde mm. and um, Fred allowed, well Ashton allowed us to do um, the second act part of deux, but we put the ribbon part of deux in, uh, I mean the last act part of deux because we couldn't do the maypole. Mm -hmm. And so at the very end, um, when Kelvin does the big seat lift and he just, brought, everyone started to clap and he just brought me slowly forward to the edge of the stage and everyone went, bananas oh. and Peggy who was on the jury we could actually see her and she was crying oh that's beautiful it was just lovely oh good it good. was such a beautiful moment so, and so from from then on we sort of became the darlings of the competition of Australian dance not Austrian no, dance oh yes yeah, so, <laughs> so and for us it was like oh that's amazing never experienced oh. anything like it I'm it sure well deserved Oh, but it was, it was amazing. And that beautiful pa little Pavlova who won that competition, mm. she was, I think, 18 or something. Yeah. She was just amazing. Oh, beautiful. great. Yeah. So we are embarking on a little version of Swan Lake. Yes, very small. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Um, but the, the bones are, you know, of a very well-known, very... Um, very respected version from Anne Williams, obviously. Mm, yes. And I just, let's go down, step down memory lane a little bit. Yes. And what was your sort of development with the role of Odette Odile? You know, it, it's a, the most demanding role it really for is the really. ballerina. Yes. And no doubt that you and every other dancer that goes through that that role, that character development, it's a full arc, um, a full yes, discovery. Yes, what is. was your discovery like the first time you danced it and then maybe the last time you danced it? Well, I think, you know, I was quite young when I first did it and, you know, technically, you know, at my peak. But that doesn't mean to say that artistically you are. And that's that's the isn't that Isn't the balancing that a, a act? Say, it's such a sad thing sometimes. It truly is. It, it, so that, you know, you, you, you do it and you're strong. Um, and you, I remember you take, I took on board everything that Anne said because uh, she went in depth about the character. You must go and read up about Swan. You need to do your homework, mm -hmm. which we, I did, we did. And I learned a lot about swans that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I learned about, you know, eight to ten foot wingspan and they can be vicious but they're fragile and all of those things. So, but it takes years for that to, for you to really process that yeah. and for it all to come out. So mm. then later on when you do it, maybe the technique's not so good, mm. but you've lived life. And I think you bring something else to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know, that's the thing. It's, mm. I mean, I, I always feel technique is great. It is. Artistry is better. Yeah, <laughs> I know. What do you do with that technique? Yes, exactly. You know, it's how do you interpret? And that's why, you know, I think, you know, Amber Scott, who's doing her, her final performance mm. yes. um, as a dancer with this company, yes. is tackling this role. And it's beautiful to watch her her depth of artistry. Absolutely. And that comes through experience of, of her career and life. Yes, it does. You know, yeah. and the ups and downs of life. It, Absolutely. Um, it's, and I see that in her too, which is so beautiful. And, uh, and, you know, we might, because, you know, she's now going to retire, she's had two children, you can adapt the technique, but it doesn't take away. The artistry is so amazing. Mm. That, and that's what you look at and it's just beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, Marilyn, 16 years 
as director of the Australian Ballet School. Yes. And you were director of the company during some um, times where you had to pull everyone together I and did. really show leadership. Yes. Um, I have read, there's a great quote of yours where you express your gratitude towards um, Dame Peggy for mentoring you in, in leadership. Mm -hmm. You watched her on how she was as a leader. I did. What did you learn from Dame Peggy and sort of how did you bring that to your own sense of leadership? Well, I watched a woman who was passionate and had an amazing vision. Mm -hmm. But I also, as I got older and, you know, I didn't call her Dame Peggy anymore, but Peggy, and she called me her artistic daughter. But I saw this woman, even though she was crippled with, you know, the problem she had and she was on crutches, mm -hmm. she was so brave and courageous. And she also said to me, Marilyn, it's a lonely job to be a director. It can be very, very lonely because the buck stops with you. No matter who you talk to, it, you, in the end, you're the one who has to make the decisions and sometimes they're very difficult. And she said, you will never have everybody liking you. No. You must really get used to that and you have to put that aside. And if your vision is true and right, that's what you need to do. Um, in that you have to be kind to people, mm. but you're never going to have everybody as your friend. Mm. And that's a, that's a hard lesson actually. And also if you've come from being a dancer and your colleagues, and then you have to be in a leadership role, it everything changes and it can be very, very confronting and upsetting. All of this is ringing very true. Yes. It's, um, Dame Peggy is, was spoke, spoke to you and you're speaking to me as director now. So <laughs> we're passing on the advice from generation to generation. Yes, they're not easy jobs. <laughs> so Marilyn, 16 years as director of the school. Um, how do you feel about guiding 16 years of Australian dancers? I mean, when you watch, when you have watched on stage the professionals that have graced the stages, is it a sense of motherhood? Is it a sense of pride? What it's do you feel? It's all of those things. It's all of those things. And uh, I loved working with them when they were young mm. and being able to watch them grow. And it, it, it is a sort of thing like your babies. And then when they go to the company, you, you let them fly. But um, I, I, I was very privileged and humbled to have 16 years at the school and to be able to and also to be able to give them that residence which I worked for 16 years for that so that they'd be well cared for mm -hmm. and um, you know that was part of what I wanted to do with the school was mm. to make sure that they were very well cared yeah. for. And named after you now. Well I think it was because it took so <laughs> long. <laughs> but the lo other lovely story about that residence is the people who owned that when we went to auction, um, knew Peggy very well. Oh. Because she lived next door. Her apartment oh was next door, and she used to go and swim in their pool. Oh my gosh. So when the family knew the school wanted it, they were determined that we were going to get oh, that's it beautiful. because of Peggy. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we met the whole family afterwards. Oh my gosh. Lovely. So, um, is there a ghost that haunts the hallways then? <laughs> Maybe. The Dame Peggy ghost. She, goes, nice she takes one. a dip in the pool or something. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marilyn, we study a video that you filmed in Adelaide. Yes. We've, we've studied it through and through. Your fourth act in that simulcast is stunning. The question I have, though, is... Were you aware that five million Australians were watching you? No. Would that have affected your sense of nerves knowing that you were performing as a national icon for five million people across the country? Well, yeah, it was, <laughs> was nerve-wracking. I mean, and I think, as you know, as, as one performs more and there's more responsibility, one gets more nervous each time because the expectation is so great. Isn't that the truth? It is the truth. You would think it gets easier but and it easier. it doesn't. 
it gets harder and harder. It does, it really does get harder and harder and sometimes I think, I just don't think I'm going to be able to go out there and do this. But once you set foot on the stage, it, it changes. But the, the, the pre-performance nerves can be... Debilitating. Totally debilitating. That's how I was at the end of my career. My last shows at the Royal Ballet were um, riddled with doubt and nerves and yes. it, was, it was not a pleasurable experience. No, and that, that's, that's the thing. It, it takes away all of that spontaneity. When <laughs> one's young, you can just go out there and do it. Yes. You know, think, oh yes. no, this is... This well, is. well it, it was captured on camera and danced beautifully. So you obviously like curbed those nerves quite well. And, um, and we all still watch that video over and over. Well, I don't like watching it because I wasn't at my technical best. You have told me that before, and that is absolutely not the truth. I will oh, anyway. disagree with you on camera. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, lastly, Maren, I just want to read a quote to you. Um, this is from you. And I think it just sort of imparts who you are and what you mean to this company. So bear with me. I grew up, as it were, in the cradle of the Australian ballet. It is my family, and I love it warts and all. I have been part of its highs and lows, which at times seem to be reflected in my own life. I was there through its darkest hours and then helped to pick up the pieces. I have a great passion and loyalty for my company and its school, instilled in me by Peggy. She herself possessed these qualities in abundance. Well. I personally, and I speak for the entire Australian Ballet, you possess those qualities in abundance. So from Peggy to you, it's a pleasure to speak to you. It's been a joy. Thank it's you, Dave. It's a pleasure to have you in the studio. Thank you. And we're honored to bring, you know, Anne's version of Swan Lake back and to have you guiding us through with the process onto the stage. Thank you so much. Great to chat. Thanks, David.